In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is the day that the Lord has made. It is a, uh, it is a joy to be entering the last Sunday of our, uh, our beloved fast. We have this period of time where we are uh, fasting for the, for the uh, 15, for, well, 15 days of August, but on the 15th day we're not fasting, we're, we're celebrating. Um, but as we enter this last Sunday of this small fast, it's not a 40-day fast like we do for our Lord uh, whenever he departed this life and then resurrected. It is a, uh, not even half that. It's not even half that. 14 days uh, where we remember the, the, um, the holiest woman to have ever lived. This is very important that we remember why we're doing this. But in this time that we're in this period of fast, we are, we are given a few things to remember, to keep in our minds, to keep in our hearts, to keep in our souls. And one of the things that we are um, uh, given as a gift from the church as we do these things, uh, as we make our prayers, as we make our fast, as we make our uh, charitable uh, works of mercy uh, that we do uh, because Christ has asked us to do them, it's, imp it's important for us to, to read this epistle and to really keep it into our hearts, right? It says that we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of those who are weak. It seems like a pretty simple statement. It seems like it is very self-explanatory that if we happen to be among those who have been, quote-unquote, saved, according to St. Paul here, if we are in Christ the way we are claiming to be, then those who are struggling with their lives, those who are weak at this time, we who are strong need to um, offer the... Uh, the, the appropriate amount of patience, kindness, love towards those individuals, right? This is what happens, right? And we see it, we see it in the lives of the saints. Like we see it in, in how compassionate they were towards others. We see it in how they opened their hearts, their souls to, to people who just were really down, really, really down in where it was that they were walking in their lives. And people that just did not have enough of a heart or enough of a mind had not been taught. They had not been enlightened. There are so, there's so much love that is being poured out by Christ and by extension to the saints. When Jesus comes across anyone who is sick, he has compassion upon him. When the apostles came across anyone who was sick, they had compassion and ministered to them, right? And then we fast forward 2,000 years, right? And we have individuals. Now, if we saw somebody that was truly sick, we would probably have compassion. We would. But what happens to us, and, uh, you know, I can really only speak for myself, is when we see people who have, um, uh, 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 you know, their mind is not thinking appropriately, right? And, and they might have a difference of mindset or a difference of thought, where Christ would look at them and say, maybe, you know, you're a little broken right now. You need to be fixed and healed. What do we do? We start arguing. <laughs> we start arguing. We, we feel that it is our moment at that point in time to drive into their uh, mistakes, whether they be political mistakes, religious mistakes, societal mistakes, economical mistakes, whatever mistakes they happen to be making, we feel that it is our job to drive right in and say, ah, I'm strong, I know better, therefore we're going to have this conversation until you see it my way. But that's not what St. Paul is saying here. That's not what St. Paul is saying here. When Saint, what St. Paul is saying here is if we are strong, then the failings of the weak shouldn't affect us at all. Shouldn't affect us at all. It shouldn't even have a negative or a positive effect to us because if a person is truly sick, whether they're sick in their mind, whether they're sick in their body, whether they're sick in their soul, and we're all sick in our soul, folks. We all are. We need Christ to heal us. 
So many times whenever I come and I offer a blessing and people are like, oh, Father Nick, thank you. Father Nick, you've, you've blessed me. I'm like, it's not me. It's not me. It's Christ who loves you, who sent me to you. The apostles said nothing different. It's not me. I have nothing to give you. I'll offer the blessing of Jesus of Nazareth. That's what I'm going to offer you. And in his name, the apostles performed miracles. Our goal at all points in times is to reflect Christ. And we do that in so many different ways. And we see it in the context always. We see it in the context always first by healing and then by correction. That's how Christ comes. Before he ever says the words, go and sin no more, he heals them. <laughs> Before he ever says, oh, your faith has made you well, right? He heals them. He endures the pain. He endures the suffering. He endures the struggle. He endures the failings. He shows us how to do that with great compassion. And then he says, only after the person is strong enough to bear those words, then he says, go and sin no more. We have to understand that the, and, and we see this, by the way, in the Orthodox Church, we see this by the way that the Orthodox Church's mission comes to us. How does the Orthodox Church's mission come to us? How many, times, how many times does the church offer sermons like this? Maybe once a little bit. The, long, the, the major part of the service is not me preaching. I know you want me to preach less, but the major, part of the, sermon is not, the major part of the service is not me preaching. The major part of the service is God acting in our lives and us submitting ourselves to the Lord. That's the major part of it. And in every service that we have, bless you, in every service that we have, there is an action of the Holy Spirit that works in our lives. If we will allow it. If we will allow it. If we stand at the gate and close the door and say, I don't need you, Lord. I'm just here because I have to fulfill an obligation. Then the Holy Spirit's not going to act on us. It will try to act on us, but we're shutting the door. It's healing that the church gives us so that we may actually understand the truths that the Lord is trying to give us to correct our lives. First healing, then correction. This is how God deals with us. And this, beloved, is the method by which we must heal others. It's not us that does the healing anyway. Myself included, I'm the priest, I have the blessings, I have all of these things, but it's still not me, it's God that's healing them. So when we see this, and when we understand this, we're, you know, we're about to enter into a really difficult time in our country. Every few years, we, we lose our brains. And, and somewhere along the line, we become less Christian in our, in our deliberations with each other. I pray that doesn't happen this year. Whether it's political, whether it's over sports, you know, it's coming, man. The fall is difficult for us. And even if, even if there are individuals that happen to be on the opposite side of whatever it is that we think is right, you know, even if there happen to be individuals, first, first we have compassion and love and healing. And then if they want the truth from us as we believe it to be, then we can offer it. But as a wise person always told me, no one, no one, no one, no one is ever going to know or care about what you know until they know about how much you care. Christ first showed that he cared. And then those who had ears to hear, they heard. Those that didn't, we heard it in the gospel. He casts out demons by the, because he's the ruler of demons. They weren't going to hear. 
So he didn't preach to them. He still showed them compassion, though. He still, he still showed them love and mercy. And we, commanded by our Lord through the, in, through the uh, example and words of the Apostle Paul today, should do no different. Let us have that compassion exemplified in all the saints, especially the one that we're fasting for right now, Panagia, the Theotokos. Let us have compassion as we offer those healing opportunities before we offer the teaching ones. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise.